Hey guys, this is Tiffany again, and I'm back to talk about Stranger Things 2, and this is Chapter 3 called The Polywog, and I'm so excited because, I mean, you, if you have any love of science or, um, like, I guess, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and, like, those those fantastical universes, you're familiar with the scientific and the paranormal, like, magical type of polywog. So, I was really excited when I saw this title. So, of course, we realized that there is a polywog in the trash, and it almost looks slug-like. It's in almost like the tadpole stage, um, and Dustin puts it in his Ghostbuster trap, and he you know, takes it to his room, you know, as stealthy as he can, obviously acting very nervous, like something's wrong about around his mom, when she's like, hey, how's it going? And he's like, hee hee hee, you know, because he obviously knows that he's trying to smuggle this, and she's, uh, he even goes as far as to tell her he put a motor in his trap to make it sound like the real thing from the movie. So, <laughs> kudos to you for uh, coming up with a white lie on the on the spot, I guess. But yeah, he decides to uh, put it in the same tank as his turtle was in, and he gives it his favorite candy, which is Three Musketeers. And you know, all of his friends give him grief because it's pretty much just n nougat. But um, apparently, the polywog likes it also, so he kind of has like this candy bond now with the polywog and decides to name it D'Artagnan, uh, which of course is just like the Three Musketeers. So I uh, <laughs> gotta love that little, you know, input there. Uh, but yeah, it goes back to Hopper again when he leaves food for Eleven. So it goes back, as we saw in season one, uh, during Christmas time, he's, you know, taking some food and like that. I actually had those bowls growing up, those, uh, the green bowl with like the, the lid for like Tupperware and it's ridged. I had those like in the complete set growing up. So for me, this is kind of like a nostalgia thing too, because that was part of my childhood. That's the uh, the actual type of uh, Tupperware that we owned. So it's kind of like that flashback for me too, but he's leaving this with those uh, Eggos and like the, the I guess the wrapper or the um, s s cellophane, I don't know. What is it? I don't know. Anyway, so he, or clean wrap. Yeah, there you go. That works. So he's leaving it in that little woods box or whatever it is, like the, uh, I guess where you can put like ammo or hunting uh, different stuff, and of course, Eleven sees it, sees him putting it in there. She, of course, grabs it because she's starving and trying her best to survive as it is, so any help is, of course, welcome. And she finally, like, after seeing him walk off, she's like, you know what? Enough is enough. I need to reveal myself. So she does choose to reveal herself to Hopper. And this is kind of where you realize, okay, so this is what happened. After all this survival by herself, she decides that she needs to approach someone. And she trusts Hopper enough to approach him. And obviously, we can kind of put two and two together, even though they kind of leave it ambiguous, and say, oh, okay, so he decided to offer her, most likely, uh, the capability to stay with him in his cabin, which it does actually show later. So, um, it fast forward to current, he has, she's still mad, he's trying to wake her up, and she's not talking to him, she's rolled over in the bed, looking away from the, her bedroom door, and He's like, oh, you're still mad, huh? And she's like, hmm, you know. You, you, finally, finally, we see her acting kind of like a child. You know, all this time she's been, like, obviously in a, a lab experiment, experiment, but now she's more getting the chance to be a true kid. And here's where we kind of finally see a little bit of that. You know, that, hmm, I'm mad at you. I'm not talking to you thing. Um, and he's like, well, fine. I guess I'll just have to finish this triple-decker ego extravaganza by myself. 
<laughs> so, of course, that's enough to get her out of her room and eating breakfast. And it's got, like, whipped cream and chocolate uh, drizzle and chocolate chips. And it uh, looks like maybe strawberries and different fruit, maybe. But uh, enough where you get the... It's not very healthy, but it's awesome, which is, you know, of course, she's excited about it. Um, and she starts talking to him because, obviously, she went to that that space that you know sensory deprivation space where she heard Mike and she she's yet again it seems questioning him when can I you know go see Mike or see my friends because I want to reveal myself and he's always saying soon and yet again he says soon and she gets very angry because she's like, you always say soon. And it's like, day three, you say soon. Day 300, you say soon. And as an answer, when will you stop saying soon? Day 500, day 600? Like, she's yelling at him at this point. And he kind of takes a step back because he, you know, she's right. He keeps saying, oh, you'll see him soon. And he says, basically, whenever it's safe. When that will be, we don't know. And Eleven gets that sense also that it's never going to be safe enough, definitely for Hopper or for her to uh, actually go out and actually uh, reveal that she is still alive, still fine, um, and actually talk to Mike and, and her other friends as well. So... Um, she actually go, gets so angry, she's, she tells Hopper, yet again, you know what, friends don't lie, and just, like, yells it at him, because at this point, she feels like he's betrayed her, that he's, not only did he lie to her about, you know, coming home, and she was angry about that, but now, yet again, he seems to be pushing off and lying about when she'll get to finally see Mike, and she's had enough. Um... But it shows Dustin, after he discovers his polywog, he's at the library and, like, like pulling books off of shelves, trying to uh, find everything on reptiles and uh, anything he can find that would help him, uh, you know, to classify what it is he found in his trash can. So, uh, he has this... Uh, interaction with the librarian he's like here you go five books she's like well you can only have five he's got five on the desk but apparently he's already checked out five that he hasn't returned so he gets so I guess like eager to have these he's like oh what's that and look there look a distraction grabs them and you know runs out without checking them out of course so uh, we can see how rebellious he is, I guess. But, um, he, he obviously wants to figure out what this, you know, creature is, as we know it's a polywog. But I'm sure he suspects, but he just wants to make sure. But, uh, it, it goes to Will. Like, basically, Bob's taking him to school or, uh, to spend time with his uh, friends and he talks about his experience as a kid with his nightmares and he's talking about uh, Mr. Baldo the Clown who always like he met him I guess at like a carnival or like maybe a circus and it scared him in such a way or impacted him where he would be in his nightmares and dreams and he says that one, I think in a way he's trying to help Will overcome his own terror that he's been experiencing, obviously. Uh, so he tells him in his dreams, he told him to go away. And after finally yelling at the clown a second time to go away, he, he finally did, according to Bob. And finally vanished. Uh, so you can see that Will is, you know this is something that he finally is like, oh, you know what, that might work, you know, and so you can see that he's thinking about what he can do to do the same, and uh, especially with the Thessal Hydra. Um, it goes back to their science class, and they're talking about uh, the history and story of Phineas Gage, and how he had a an iron rod through his head, 
and how it affected his mentality, how it impacted like the way he thought about things and the repercussions about it, which obviously Will is deeply enthralled by, whereas everybody else is like, oh, this is a snore fest, you know. Um, and so, I mean, yet again, all these little little hints of what each character is kind of going through and how it kind of, you know, glues together. It's it's very, I love how they're keeping it because it just keeps you involved and keeps you riveted. But, uh, but yeah. And it, of course we're going back to Hopper and those crops. He's got it pinpointed like on a map where all these different places are that these crops have impacted. And he does like the connect the dots thing to make a smaller circle radius and a larger circle radius. And it, he realizes that this is all centering in the center of this is the lab and it, the facility itself. So he is shaken to obviously, you know, as he suspected himself that this is all centering around something going on in this lab. So he, um, you know, is not very happy about that. Um, and so it goes, it goes back because we're still learning what happened to Eleven after Hopper took her in. It shows them going to the cabin and he reveals it was his grandfather's, I guess, like hunting cabin that he stayed in whenever he was hunting during the winter. Uh, and it's so estranged and so it's like a, a hermit paradise almost from society out in the middle of the woods that, you know, he, he thinks it's safe enough to, you know, for them to kind of make camp here or, you know, live here. And uh, so it shows them, like, he's putting on a record of Jim Crow's, or uh, I'm not really sure how you say his name. I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. And it's, you don't mess around with Jim, which is kind of ironic. But it shows them basically put, putting this cabin that's been used for storage and has dust and web you know, uh, remains everywhere from spiders and cleaning it up, you know, sweeping and moving things and boxing things and getting it, uh, put to rights to where it's, you know, habitable or inhabitable, I guess. Um, it's, it, it actually shows him even fixing a tripwire around the perimeter where if anyone gets in proximity, it'll sound off a loud bang. So we can kind of see at some point in the future, that tripwire is going to go off. When? How? I don't know. But as much focus as they've kind of put on this, it's kind of obvious that it's foreshadowing something's going to happen where someone's going to approach the cabin and it's going to sound off. Who knows? But um, basically, we also learn what the rules are, which is hoppers don't be stupid rules. Rule one, always keep the curtains drawn. Rule two, only open the door if it's his secret knock, which he demonstrates to Eleven. And rule three, don't ever go out alone, especially during the day. And it shows her very obviously during these rules, she's getting ready and she does go out alone and during the bright daylight. So she's obviously had enough. She has, you know, gotten dressed and she step as she steps over the the tripwire to avoid it she's like i'm not stupid and goes off into you know into the woods so um and here we go we have steve finally getting confronted by nancy because he hasn't talked to her since the party uh, and they have a confrontation and she's like, why did you not, you know, meet up with me like we, we normally do? And he tells her what happened at the party, what she said. And he's like, you know, he basically almost challenges her to tell him that she loves him. And she is kind of taken aback and doesn't say it, I guess, quick enough or doesn't say it at all, obviously. So he walks off and she, she's kind of think he tells her how she called him bullshit, how everything essentially to summarize was bullshit. And yeah. Uh, so finally we have this polywog. Dustin has realized what it is. He t tells his friends, Hey, look at this. This is obviously a polywog. And Will realizes that it's a polywog from the upside down. 
and it freaks him out because he's having that flashback of him at the end of the last season, you know, uh, spewing up a slug-like looking thing that goes down the drain, and he's fairly sure this is the same thing because at that time it was a small, tiny little tadpole, and now it's slowly growing bigger. Um, so, of course, he's freaked out, and he, you know, lets Will, uh, or excuse me, Will lets Mike know he needs to talk to him about this creature. But, uh, so, Bob, it goes back to Bob, talking to Joyce about the JVC camera, and how there was, like, it looked like it had been messed up somehow, like it had scuff marks that made him look at the tape, and he actually saw will being bullied and called zombie boy so joyce is obviously shaken by this because she's tired of everybody you know bullying will because she feels like it, it's attributing and adding to his supposed ptsd so she uh does go home and watches the tape and uh she actually sees in the static uh, as she pauses it the the actual Thessal Hydra. She takes a piece of paper, like shades over it, and sure enough, it matches Will's drawing of the Thessal Hydra enough to make her realize this is very real and this is a real threat that we need to be concerned about. So, um, let's see. Basically, uh, Hopper shows the lab there the center of the crop trouble. He, the the guy at the lab laughs it off like, ha ha, this is, that's absurd. There's nothing we're doing here that's wrong. When obviously we know as an audience that there is. And Hopper obviously knows better. So uh, he confronts them about that. Uh, Nancy asks Jonathan because Steve kind of th like yelled in her face, oh, it was your other boyfriend, Jonathan. He took you home. Uh, so she confronts Jonathan about taking her home. And what happened and he basically you know picks it up from his side uh, about Steve being angry uh, what happened there and um, they she has this epiphany about something with Radio Shack since obviously Bob works there and I don't know what device they're gonna get but obviously she has a plan for something um, but yeah let's see uh, 11 and Hopper it, it does reflect back to them and it, it and they're kind of living together that's led up to where we are currently and she like he's talking about parents and mothers and Eleven asks him about her mom like do I have a mom where is she and Hopper lets her know she's gone she's passed away or no longer with us and um, he's actually, and I nerded out so much about this because I'm a huge, huge Anne of Green Gables fan. And the minute he said that, I like he read he reads like two lines from the book, and it's like I felt alone, and I, no one in the world wanted me. Uh, and Mrs. Thomas, and I was like, ah, he's reading Anne of Green Gables. I've read it so many times. I'm a huge, huge Anna Green Gables fan, so it was really heartwarming to me because if I could ever read a book to a younger kid or have them read a story that I love, it would be Anna Green Gables. So that huh, hit me hard because, like, obviously, you know, it talks about kindred spirits and and uh, the bond that you have with your friends and so much of that story is reminiscent to Stranger Things and to Eleven's own situation because she's kind of an orphan uh, but as Anne is very accepted by Marilla and Matthew you know he wants uh, Eleven to know that she too will be uh, at some point accepted even though she's unusual like Anne is. She's red-haired, she's very quick-tempered, you know, and he wants Eleven to kind of feel like she does have as much potential as Anne of Green Gables did. So anyways, before I get too far into that tangent of how much I love Anne of Green Gables, um, it basically uh, it shows uh, Eleven again. She's uh, She looks at this mother and her daughter on a swing set and they see her and the lady asks where your where's your mom where are your parents and 11 obviously doesn't want to 
really talk to her. So instead, she, with her mind, wraps the swing around the top pole of the swing set, uh, very just aggravated. And the you know mother sees it with her daughter. They look back, and Eleven has ninja vanished, as she tends to do. Um, but yeah, so Will, they they kind of reveal what Will has now. They say that Will has true sight. So for us D&D fans, as Dustin also verifies us, the ability to see into the ethereal plane, to see, like, to have this ability where you can be cognizant of your current plane and current world, but you also have this ability to switch on like this other plane to be able to see into the other side and so he says that will has that which really is exactly what is going on here so yet again we've got just like the upside down we have yet another wonderful dungeons and dragons reference so there you go um so the polywog they're finally like you know looking at it and that they're going to show it to their science teacher but i mean at this point will has told mike what it is what he suspects about it and he freaks out they run in and grab it put it back in the ghostbuster trap as they're getting ready to show the teacher and they're like oh don't mind this we're sorry it was just a like a, a joke a prank or whatever and they run out and uh, Mike tells them what, and with Will's assistance, what they think. They've obviously locked Max out of the room because this is not a conversation that she would probably understand yet. Like she knows a little bit of what happened, but obviously they can't tell her everything. Uh, but they are talking about this creature, and as they're talking about it, it grows its legs. Like they have seen something moving around in its stomach and it's just it evolving um, and it grows legs so now it is able to move around and and be very mobile and as Max uses like a bobby pin to break into the the room the polywog like slides and is drifting out through the the school hallways so they're trying to chase after it and it, it like has what appears like a roar that it does which is cute yet scary um because it's got like little tiny little teeth that looks uh looks kind of like this guy right here but uh or like i don't even know um maybe langoliers type i don't even know what to equate it to but anyway really kind of freaky um so dart gets away um and then we see that nancy and jonathan have bought something from radio shack what it is we still don't know yet um, she calls Barb's mom and tells her to meet her and it shows the lab facility they're still listening to phone calls still like focusing in on things that seem suspicious or that shouldn't be right obviously they have everybody's lines tapped that were involved in the the uh, incident in season one I mean of course they are so they uh, we know that Nancy wants to meet with Barb's mom specifically to show her something or tell her something what it is i don't know what she has who knows but we'll see i'm sure maybe even next episode we'll um uh, i don't really know what her plan is or how she's gonna throw barb's parents off of moving but we'll certainly see um let's see and then of course hopper gets radioed yet again about that russian girl theory and uh because of the swing set swing set so he knows instinctively that Eleven has escaped and he freaks out and immediately leaves where he's at with the crops and whatnot to go and go back to the the cabin I would assume and uh, Will and his gang are still looking for Dart um, it shows basically it them searching the entire school will finally finds it in the bathroom and it's like crouched down uh, behind a toilet um he you know radios everybody else they come in there uh but during this this time uh the the creature like scares him he goes into the upside down um uh, 
and we see the polywog escape yet again or we think it does it's actually still in the bathroom but will actually leaves the bathroom when he's in the upside down so um and here we go eleven is at the school and she's looking for mike and they actually like they're right across the hallway from each other and you have that moment like he's going this way she's going this way she sees someone pass by like almost like that emotional soul bond knows it's him so she crosses over to but yet she goes the opposite direction and uh it shows uh mike going into the gym he's looking in the locker room for the creature and runs into max and he is obviously not pleased to see her she's like why do you hate me so much he lets her know that she has no place in his group uh, and he actually rattles off, you know, what their rank and class are, and he's like, Eleven's our mage, and she's like, who? And he's like, oh, you know, the girl that used to be part of the group that is no longer here, almost makes it seem like she moved away, and so Max is, like, talking to him and skating on her skateboard around him, and Eleven comes to the gym and sees them through the window so of course you have that moment of jealousy where eleven sees him almost thinks he's moved on beyond her and no longer wants her in his life like she has that kind of doubt moment you feel obviously like anyone would in that kind of a situation uh and she gets so jealous she knocks max off of her skateboard and of course uh Mike realize, kind of has a a hint or a suspicion it's it was Eleven's doing especially when Max describes it as like a magnetic pull that has taken her off her skateboard um but yeah so Will finds Dart in the upside down um and he turns around and there in the shadows as the Thessal Hydrates found him yet again. He starts running, but in his mind he has that echo of Bob telling him about the clown, about how he uh, was able to get Mr. Baldo to get out of his nightmares by saying, go away, and he faced it. So Will finally stops in his tracks and turns around to face the Thessal Hydra and just yells at it to go away. Uh, multiple times and the Thessal Hydra you know very menacing seems to almost ebb and flow around him and then into him it's almost like it like that you know it just infiltrates his mouth and his eyes and like all of the all of his face maybe his ears just like completely infiltrates his body and how that will affect him I don't know is he going to stay in the upside down again and be lost uh given the 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 chapter names it, I do wonder <laughs> but obviously this is going to make a huge huge impact on him and I almost feel like I, I don't even know what to think at this point so Anyways, that was chapter three of Stranger Things 2 called The Polywog. Uh, gosh, like these episodes just keep getting better and better, especially with Eleven and with uh, the, the, just these, all these characters having their own different stages of dealing with different grief, uh, different like, you know, oppression, uh, bullying, everything that you can possibly imagine. Like, every single character is having something that is happening to them that they're having to deal with. So, I wish they would kind of focus more on Lucas. I feel like he's not getting enough of his own little story and his own limelight. Like, Dustin has something going on. Will obviously has something going on. Mike has his thing. What about Lucas? That's my only, only criticism right now. I want more focus on something Maybe what that he's having to deal with after everything that happened in, in season one. I feel like, yet again, he's not really getting enough of a spotlight into what's going on in his life. But maybe we'll get that. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I really love this episode. I definitely will continue to review more of Stranger Things 2. It's been amazing so far, and I can't wait to finish it. 
Um, but yeah, definitely continue to review Stranger Things 2. Uh, we're also reviewing Star Trek Discovery, The Walking Dead, The Orville. I will be reviewing Doctor Who when it comes back, as well as Game of Thrones, and even more nerdy, awesome shows that are out there as they come on. I am also doing unboxings of Loot Crate and Loot Anime. Uh, we also do uh, Fandom of the Month is coming actually very soon. I've got Anime Bento and Scotch Box Japanese Snacks. I, I don't know if I said Owl Crate, but I also get Owl Crate. And we are also doing a Destiny 2 giveaway. So if you want to win your own copy, uh, whether it be Xbox or PC or P PlayStation, uh, definitely check out that video on how to win your own copy. Uh, definitely please subscribe. We really appreciate you guys and want to make the best content for you. So hopefully you enjoy that. We'll be doing some gaming streams very soon. And so much more fun uh, content from like conventions and cosplay everything you can imagine that's nerdy and fun including anime of course being me uh but yeah that's it for the polywog and i hope to see you guys back again and thank you for watching bye guys